This is Jeff back today with another video on one of my favorite things, which is homemade bacon. As you can see right here, we've got a pork belly that I got from the local butcher. This is actually about six pounds and it comes with the skin on. You can ask your, your local butcher to trim it off. Hopefully they do that for you, but I actually did it myself and I've done it ahead of time so that you can see, lost a little bit of meat, but you wanna try to keep as much of the, uh, the meat and fat as possible. Now I'm gonna put this away for later on because I'm actually gonna freeze it, might make some pork rinds out of it or something, but we've got a pretty nice cut of meat left after the trimming. It's got a few small areas that are a little bit thin. One thing you're gonna find out though about making your own homemade bacon is that it's a lot different than what you get at the store. At the store, you buy bacon, the strip's this long. By the time you get done, it's about that big. That's because they take it and they inject it with a lot of water and sodium and it blows it up, makes it look bigger. You'll find that when you make your own bacon at home, it's gonna stay very consistent to the size that you finish with once you cure it and smoke it. And by the end of the video, you'll see that. Now, what I wanna do, I'm gonna take the pork belly and I'm gonna use brown sugar I've got one cup of dark brown sugar right there. I've got a quarter cup of espresso grounds, and that's optional, but I like a little bit of coffee flavor to it, and I find espresso grounds, you know, to kind of add that. Some people may use, uh, you know, black pepper or something like that, but uh, the maple syrup is probably one of the most important ingredients to me. This is real maple syrup. It's not... Uh, you know, $1.99 a bottle stuff, but spending a little bit of extra money definitely makes a difference. Now here I've got a half a cup of kosher salt, and then I've got curing salt, which curing salt's a little bit different than regular salt. If you've read anything or seen anything before about curing salt, uh, you'll know that if you, you can't use it, it's not pink Himalayan salt, it's actually a curing salt, it's a chemical that helps preserve it. And what I'm gonna do is add all this stuff into the bag, which I've got a hefty jumbo bag. Uh, it doesn't look brand new, because this isn't the first time I've done this. This is the first time I've used this bag, but this just happens to be the last one out of it. And I'm gonna start with the brown sugar. Get that in there. And we'll mix in the espresso grounds. And let's get the maple syrup in here. You'll find that this is very easy. It doesn't look difficult. It isn't difficult. The main thing is that when you get to the pink curing salt, that you're using enough and not too much. This right here is only two teaspoons. It's about one teaspoon for every three pounds. So you can see it's very tiny amount, but I like to Get it in there and make sure that it's mixed around with the rest of them so it doesn't get set in one little area. Okay, it's still a pretty dry rub. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of water to it. Let's see, got there. Under a half a cup, and about a half a cup of water. It's going to be a, a wet cure, and you'll see how it progresses in the next few days. That water will help it all mix together with the, the maple syrup. Some people do dry rubs, uh, dry curing. Some do liquid. I prefer the liquid method, especially with the the uh, maple syrup. You'll find that the maple syrup actually. Um, at the end, when you cook it up, it, it almost candies the bacon. I'm gonna get it in here. What I'm gonna do is zip it up. Let's, let's get this out of the way. Let's move it around. Make sure to get it all over it. Now, this isn't a short process. This takes about a week. It's going to be in the refrigerator once to make sure that everything's mixed. I'm going to get the air out of the bag. I don't know if you have to work it over quite as hard as I did. But see if I can turn it sideways in there. 
I used to do uh, 20, 25 pounds of this at a time because once people heard I was making it, they wanted some. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have three refrigerators now, so I just do enough for myself. I think six pounds should get me through a week or two. Right, press the air out. this. Also, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I've actually put the date on there. The date today, October 8th. Reason being is because we're actually going to cure this in the refrigerator for about seven days. And what we do is we put it in the refrigerator, say face up. Tomorrow, 24 hours later, I'm going to flip it. Next day, 24 hours later, the same thing. And we're going to do that for seven days. So it's helpful to have the date on it. You get uh, four or five days down the road, you don't remember exactly which day you started. It can become a problem. But this is it, and uh, it's going to go into the refrigerator. And I'm going to show you tomorrow and every day when I flip it and how it's progressing. And then we're going to put it in the smoker and give it that hickory flavor. Okay, it's been 24 hours since we bagged up, put all the curing salt and rest of the ingredients in the bag. So it's pretty simple. It's uh, really nothing to do. I've got it right here in this one drawer. You can see, this is it after day one. It doesn't feel like it's firming up much, but you wanna flip it over, maybe move the juices around a little bit. Make sure that it's not got a lot of air pockets. Flip it right over and off for another 24 hours. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's been seven days since I last put the bacon in the refrigerator and every single day I went in and I flipped it over so that each day the juices would go to the other side. I was originally gonna show you the, uh, the process of flipping it every single day, but I thought that would become a little bit monotonous for you, so I just decided to show you. If you if, uh, on day seven, as you can see the bag's dated October 8th. Today's the 15th, seven complete days. Now, what I'm gonna do now is actually rinse it off in the sink, gets the excess salt off of it, as well as some of the clumps of coffee grounds. But I wanna leave some on there so that it keeps that flavor. And I'm just going to pat it dry. Doesn't need to be completely dry because I'm going to actually put it through a process to help dry out some of the excess moisture. Now you'll notice that the meat, when you make it, you'll notice that it feels a lot more rubbery than it did. And we're gonna take it, we're gonna put it here on a baking sheet with a little rack so that the air can get up underneath of it and above it. And we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And what that's gonna do is allow all the excess moisture on the outside of it to dry and put a little bit of a kind of plastic film, it's called a pellicle, on the outside of the bacon. And when that's done, we'll go to smoking it. So I'll see you again in 24 hours. Okay, now it's been 24 hours and the bacon's been in the refrigerator and you may not be able to see this on camera, but there's a little bit, you see the shine to it. It's actually not damp. It's just a, the, the pellicle that I was referring to. It's a little, a little bit of a rubbery coating that's on it. And actually the way that this bacon is right now, I've taken it, sliced it, put it in the oven, put it in a frying pan, and made bacon and eaten it. But I wanna add a little bit of hickory smoke flavor to it. So what I'm gonna use is my master build electric smoker. Now I live here in Florida, so it's really not cool enough to do a cold smoke on it. So we're actually gonna set it at 225 degrees, and it should take somewhere right around two hours, really you know, depends on the thickness of the meat that you have. But I'm gonna take the meat, 
and set it in here. And this uh, Master Boat electric smoker is about five years old, so of course it doesn't look brand new. And I'm gonna turn it on. And let's set the temperature. Oh, temperature to 200. 25 degrees. I'm gonna set the time to two hours. And it's gonna start smoking. And on mine, I also have the side box with the chimney that uh, you fill up with wood chips. It adds uh, an awful lot more smoke than the just the master belt electric smoker. So I've got that filled up with wood chips as well. All you do with that is turn it on. And here, here in about less than five minutes, it's gonna start smoking. And like I said, I'm gonna check on it in about an hour and we'll see how it's progressing. Probably flip it over. So we'll be right back. Okay, it's been just about an hour now. So what we're gonna do is open it up. Real simple, it's gonna be a lot of smoke coming out. It was actually rolling out pretty strong when I first, uh, first started it off. Take a look at it. Ooh, well juice is dripping out there. All right, flip it back over and put it back in. And what I'm gonna do for the second hour is actually bump it up to, let's see, set temp. Take it up to 250, because we're trying to get the meat to a point. We're trying to get the meat to a point where it's 150 degrees inside, and uh, hopefully that'll do it. We'll check the temperature here in an hour. Okay, now it's been two hours since we put the, uh, the belly, the pork belly in the smoker, and I've got it out, and I actually, I'll show you here, trimmed it up, and you'll notice I got a meat thermometer in it. Now the meat thermometer may be a little difficult to read, and the temperature's actually going down since I brought it in, but 150 degrees. At that point right there, you can actually eat it. It's safe. Uh, most of us like meat, the bacon a little bit uh, crispier than that. So I'm actually gonna cut some more. I'm gonna cut some slices. I'm gonna put it in the oven, and we'll show you the uh, completed product very shortly. Okay, now before I finish up and show you the final product, I just want to say if you're liking this video or any of my others, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me with YouTube, as I'm sure you've heard on every channel you've ever watched. So I just want to let you know that what I've done is taken the bacon, I put it on a baking sheet with a piece of parchment paper to keep it from sticking. I cut it uh, somewhat medium uh, thickness so uh, the thinner you slice it the crispier it'll get the easier it'll uh, crisp up and I put it in the oven mine was for, at 400 degrees for 20 minutes and this is what I got I cut the actual bacon in half so you're actually only seeing half strips there and this is before it goes in the oven and this is after as you can see, I've already tried it. Trust me, I've eaten uh, about a quarter pound of it already. So, um, comes out great. And uh, if you like it, please leave a comment and uh, I'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you and see you again.